Leandro Trossard, Lukayo Saka, one goal, one assist. What did you think of Arsenal today, Emeka? Yeah, it was a, it was an easy performance. Maybe too, a bit too easy for my liking, to be honest. But yeah, I don't, I don't mind it because we have a very big game um, on, on Sunday or Saturday. I'm not sure. But it was an easy performance. It was one of those performances. I think it was. I think it's the easiest performance I've seen. Um, Arsenal has had in a long time, as far as I remember. It was a super easy performance. There were spaces to run into. Mm. There were a lot of the, the opposing players were a bit lackluster in terms of their defense and how they tracked the movement of the players. Mm. So it was a very easy performance. It was a good one. Coming into the game, I mean, when I when I watched Arsenal PSV last season. I think we won. Xhaka scored um, the first leg. Second leg, they beat us. And I think from then on, things started going no. yeah, sideways for us now. But I mean, the team that we saw today, is this testament to Ateta's work um, with the team? Yeah. You know, growing or was PSV, is it that PSV was just, were just no, bad? Today? No, I don't think so. I think it's a combination of both. Because mm. the certain things I saw, like tracking the ball, tracking the moment of players, mm. that is it's not Ateta's. That is not Atata's work. Like mm -hmm. that is down to PSV as a team. They mm -hmm. couldn't track certain movements of players in obvious positions. For example, Saka's first goal. Like how does a, one of the best players in the world just elude you? Literally, the six yard mm -hmm. box. Like the playbook would say, follow him anywhere he goes, right? And then he just goes. But this, make no mistake, this is actually a much better side than mm -hmm. Arsenal fielded away to PSV last season. Last season. This is a much much better side. Mm -hmm. so, well, what did you think of the Arsenal game? I mean, I think Arsenal played literally the Dutch West Ham. I don't think PSV are any great team. I mean, they're in the Champions League as well. So, I mean, it was a fair win to Arsenal. It was an expected win. Arsenal was always going to win the game. So, winning by 4 0, I think it was always still going to be a win. So, I mean, it was kind of pretty much okay. an easy win. Two clean sheets for David Raya, right? I mean, two games, two clean sheets. Do you think um, Ramsdale is out of the no, Arsenal Ramsdale project? Ramsdale is out. Every team, every team needs competition. There has to be competition for, for, for the players. Mm. No one player is guaranteed a starting spot week in, week out. If you want to start week in, week out, show it on the pitch that you deserve to be started week in, week out. If not, I mean, it's, it's good competition for Arsenal. I think it will make the keepers sharp and you realize that, okay fine this is my chance now i can't fuck it up mm. no, somebody else is right there mm. to take my my spot yeah there's there were like so many outstanding players for arsenal today there was saliba odegaard also had a good game um saka had a decent game i mean yeah. one goal one assist trossard had a good game jesus also had a good game and i think the subs also made like a good account of themselves um i'll have you first and then America. who was your who would you say was your standout player for arsenal I think Odegaard hmm. pretty much controlled the whole yeah, game his from, goal start, was from, start, from start yeah. to finish. And his goal was just classy. Like, there is, that's a fantastic game if he does go. Hmm. Mika? Yeah, I think I'll say Odegaard too. It's because he, he has a, Odegaard had the engine from the first minute to the last minute. So, I would say him, but it's, I, I think it's either a testament to the performance or a testament to how routine it was that like you're struggling to even pick out who in the game where it was 4-0 you're struggling to really pick out who stood out because it felt like everybody was playing in game one mm -hmm. and nobody really got into gear two but they still won comfortably so mm -hmm. so last season when Arsenal played Manchester City uh, bootlegs I don't think Saliba played I think yes. Holding played yes. and I also think there's a stat that Arsenal has not lost any game where Saliba and Gabriel started uh, yes, together. Yes. Watching Saliba today and watching him over the weekend, do you think he's one of those you know, standout players yeah, for Arsenal that would be there for years? Yeah. He makes a massive difference. Like, he makes a massive difference. I mean, I could say that as an Arsenal fan, like, even playing City, if this team goes to play City, if City's game was next week, I'm not overly concerned about how to play out. I think, it's, I think it's a very competent and good enough team to actually beat Manchester City, right? Because mm. what people forget is even many of the games last season, I don't think there's a single game last season we played City where we played, like you said, everybody in the team. Like it was one of those holding, like a lot of it was patch, patch. But the thing is right now, the second group is much better than the second group last season. Mm -hmm. 
So the expectations are a bit different, right? Mm. But still, you need Saliba healthy. You need Gabriel healthy. Like you need all the guys that are, you know, first team out. Like you need them healthy at every point of the season. So. Arsenal play sports this weekend. Right. Be, and uh, sports is not, they're not actually in any European competition. What do you think that game is going to look like? I mean, I wouldn't want I wouldn't want it to be an excuse, to be honest. But um, about the European competition, I think that, like I think I has said that like um, top players have to be ready to play do this thing week in week out, and the season just started, so mm -hmm. I don't think there's a time for excuses. I think it will be a very interesting game because I think Tottenham is a much improved side, and they have they're high on confidence now. So it would be nice to see how Arsenal could work with, you know, what they currently have and, mm -hmm. and make something. I think that. It's going to be a, it's going to be the beginning of the season for one of the sides. The one that wins would go on to go on a run. I do, I do think so. Would go on a run and effectively just transform their season. That's what I think. I think it's one of those games that can set you up for the season. Okay. The second game we saw was the Manchester United Bayern Munich game. Thoughts on the game? Um, well, thoughts on the game. Bayern Munich is not an exceptional side. I think. I mean, it's certainly not in the. Bayern Munich of recent years, but Manchester United. Manchester. <laughs> Manchester United. Um, yeah, yeah, Manchester United. It will be a long season, let's just say. It will be a very long season for United. A super mm. long season. And Ten Hag. Ten Hag has two. Start to learn new expression. Because <laughs> the words he has used now, I think he's used everything. We've seen it so many, he has to introduce new expressions. Mm -hmm. Because you can't be acting shocked when they call you mm -hmm. after your team has played shit. You can't be like, oh wow, I'm so confused they called me. You've been the second best team. Right, so I think it will be a very long season for them, frankly. So, so Ola, looking at the, looking at the score, like four goals to three. I mean, on paper, it, it would seem like a, mm -hmm. uh, you know, like a tight me. game. What did you say? I said on paper it looked like an art for win. Like a what? An art for win. Yeah, nice. Oh yeah. yeah. It looked like a, it looked like a tight game. But what we saw was nothing close to. What, what were your biggest disappointments watching this game? The entire team. The entire team. Ericsson, Abismal, uh, Onana. I, I'm not expecting. A world class keeper to be making such errors. Mm. You know, like why why you're brought into the game to for, for your passing and also forget that you have passing range or whatever. Your number one job as a goalkeeper is to save shots that are facing you. Do not concede Onana has conceded two or more goals in the past. Six, five or six, six games? Six, uh, five games. There was the three one Arsenal, the three one Brighton, this four two. There was the two nil uh, Tottenham. It there was, was the, the three only two, the Wolves game. That three two. The only the Wolves game he has not considered. He did not consider the goal. Every other game since the Wolves game he has considered two or more goals. The second game he considered two against Tottenham, two against uh, Forest, three against Arsenal, three against Brighton, four against um, Bayern. 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 Now, I don't think we did. We, are, we, we I mean, we lost games, but. We never lost so many games around the bounce and conceding so many goals. Although our team is suspect because number one, my United can say, okay, fine, they have a lot of uh, players injured. Varane is not even going to do better than Lindelof right now. Mm. Varane is a two left player, two left legged player. <laughs> he runs like he has no balance. Like I see Varane play and I'm like, wow, how did he survive all those years in Madrid? He must have had a very good pairing that somebody was covering up all his messes. Mm. Because Varane is suspect. Mm. If you leave Varane one-on-one -on -one with any great uh, player, he's going to tear him off and he's going to go past him. Easy. So the whole team, Bruno Fernandes, I don't understand that guy for crying out loud. Just play a fucking game. <laughs> he just cries and just makes wayward passes. You know, half the time he's just trying to do something that do doesn't make sense. I don't understand. He's out of position. Rashford on the other hand, oh my god, don't even get me started on Rashford. Shit. So, so I, I, I can understand how you feel, 
But you don't, I feel you, like you don't understand. No, trust me, I, I can understand. No, I mean, you don't. No, you don't. I'm, an Arsenal, no. I'm an Arsenal fan. I've no, felt you, this you, for, you felt I've it. Felt you felt it. I've felt it for more your, than a decade. It's not your current predicament. Of course. I so can't. You, yeah, you can't feel it. I can't, I can't yes. understand this right you, now. You, you maybe you understood it in the past. <laughs> in the past. But you can't understand it right now. Okay. So let me say this, right? For 70 minutes, this was exactly what we saw. Everything you just expressed, right? But for 20 minutes, which was the same thing I saw against Brighton. Brighton, the first 20 minutes. They looked sharp. Yeah. Right? That means there's something fundamentally wrong with Eric Ten Hag's message to the players. Because... Press for, tw for 20 minutes and play shit for 70 minutes. Yeah, then, because it's, the same, it's very similar to what we saw against Arsenal, right? They sat back and then, you know, they didn't... They were just waiting for, like, you know, the counter-attack before, they, you know, Rashford got the goal and, 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 and that. Do you think... You it's can't keep getting high. goals against the run of play, like, and th th that seems to mm. be his plan. For let, let me bring this question. Mm. Yeah. So yeah. my question yeah. is: Do you think it's it's time for ETH to change and tweak something in that formation? I feel like ETH Eric Tenagas is proving people is pro is is showing that he's not a coach that can manage <coughs> big names. I mean, forget, forget the fact that these players are playing shit. They are big name players in that team. Mm -hmm. There's Casemiro. You have Rashford. Martinez is a big name player. Forget that. He's, he's a World nice. Cup winner. Yeah, he's a World Cup winner. He's like even, he's, even he's nice, might be blunt now, mm -hmm. but doesn't he say that he still can't sharpen it. He's still he the butcher. Just he just needs that. He needs that sharpness. Right now, Martinez is not as sharp as he was towards the end of last season. I mean, when he first started, when he first came to the team, he was kind of not so sharp. Then he was sharp, then he became sharper. But right now he's kind of like he has lost his touch. Now mm. he needs to like now this is where you need a coach to now bring it out of the players again. Say, you have this in you. Just bring it out and produce it on the pitch. And him leaving Rashford in the team for 90 minutes, I don't understand. When he can see clearly that he's playing nothing. Well, That's the reason why the boy plays nothing every game. Because he knows that whether or not he plays or he doesn't play, he stays on the pitch, earns his money. You go home smiling. Good. The fans are there crying and all that shit. The players just check their account balance. Ah, oh, okay, 350k this week. Let's go again. <laughs> Taxes. That was good. That, that, that must really look good. Anyways, I'm away from Man for a bit. Um, Demika, did you think, and I know you sort of like responded to this earlier, did you think Bayern Munich's performance was no, convincing? I don't, I, don't, I don't think they're like a top, top side, right? I don't think they're a top, top side. I do think that they have holes in them. I, I do think that um, the ruthlessness that Bayern has become accustomed to over the years, I don't think, I think there are questions about our ruthlessness. Mm. I, I mean, obviously, as the season goes on, we'll see how that turns out, but I don't think that they are the Bayern that would kill you the moment mm. you sleep. Um, um, Robin and Ribery days yeah, are not, I don't, I don't not close. Uh, the, the new, um, I mean, the new Haaland, basically, um, y'all got to stop comparing. <laughs> <laughs> y'all got to just because his yeah, name. Just, okay, let's just just because let's his name. What it is. Just because his name. Well, kind, kind of like sounds like kind of going on. Kind of like sounds like kind of. Y'all got to stop so that. Like, <laughs> Alan is a seasoned yes. player. You can't compare that boy that is just coming from Atlanta, Atlanta to Alan. Come on, y'all got to give him his credit. That boy is a young boy. That boy is fresh out academy. Yeah, well, how Literally, he's twenty. How old is Alan? Alan is 22 or something. He's 23? Oh, yes. That man is 23. Somebody can check it out. Yeah, I mean, but stop if, if Alan is 23, Alan, Alan, played, Alan, Alan, played, Alan started dominating the game Alan played when he was 20, Alan played 21. At, Alan played at Frankfurt. He scored Salzburg. Oh, no. Sa yeah, Salzburg. Sa sorry. Air Trike, uh, RB Leipzig. Right. No, no, no. I think, I think it was, I think it was Salzburg. 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 Yeah, okay. Salzburg. 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 Bro, and then he went to Dortmund, did the same. Man City is doing the same. Mm. This boy that we're talking about only scored bad 10 goals that season. So why did he drop over 70 or 80 million? His potential. It's the potential. And okay, we so, see it. So, we literally see it. So that's why, that's why we should potential. not compare him to... He's kind, of, he's kind of player that after you run of games, you start, you actually see. You see the next game, you play better than he did this one. Mm. The next one, you play better than he did this one. That's the kind of player he is. He is better than all of the number nines and all of the number elevens and all of the number sevens that we have currently in the team. So better than Marshall. Better. Come on. 
I mean, Marshall came in and he, so, he had an assist. I, he, he came yeah, in. I, that was because okay. Bayern pretty, pretty so, much so, slept. No, that, slept. No, that's because that's probably because there are two different types of strikers. Two different types of strikers. I don't I think he's the kind of striker that would assist the way Marshall just did, right? But I think he's a finisher. He's, a he's, finisher. Someone, to, he's someone that provide. inside the box he would, you know. I don't think Haaland scored any goal outside the box last season. But Haaland's movement is supreme. Yeah, and Haaland is a bully. Let's yeah. not even talk about Haaland. Yeah. You know, still on Manchester United, Onana's keeping. That's another. That's another thing to, to worry about. Was it was it worth it, right? Um, selling the year or, or I what? Feel, I, feel like, what I, I feel like contract. I feel like what? No, he he, he, he um, out of contract. He was out of contract. Yeah, okay, they didn't renew, renew his yeah, contract. It was actually they had been trying to renew his contract for six months, yeah. but he was he, he was going to have his wages lowered. He was going to have renewal okay. contract. I think it was like 300 or so. Yeah, so he was going to have re significantly lower wage. And he didn't feel like it was worth to stay for that. And I mean, I think that's a claim. Yeah. I feel like what United should have done was still renew the year's contract and keep on and get Onana. That competition that Arsenal currently has with Ramsdale and Raya, that's what Mayu should have done. Because right now, Mayu doesn't have, they, don't, club they club. don't have a substitute goalkeeper right now. If, oh. if Onana gets injured. It's one one funny guy. I can't even pronounce his Wait, name. Wait, Dubraka is no longer there. No, he's not. Henderson? He's not. He has been sold. Wow. So I will say this for Manchester United. And I so they should that. have kept the two goalkeepers, not let their go and get Onana. Because to be honest, Onana's goalkeeping is suspect. Mm. He's good on the ball and all of that shit. But you're, like I said, your number one duty as a goalkeeper is to not concede goals. And he's considering a shit ton of them right now. So, mm. so... So I will say this for Manchester United. I think that the new standard for Manchester United is mediocrity, and I think that's what a lot of people look. As an Arsenal fan, we've seen it. Arsenal has been there. It doesn't matter what Manchester United do. Something fundamentally has to change. The reason why Arsenal is doing this, currently where Arsenal is, is because Arteta is changing the culture. It's not just changing a bunch of players. Mm. It's changing the culture and the expectations. Of the entire club. And the conversation. My mm. United has sunk so deep into mediocrity that it doesn't matter how they bring a good player in. He would fall in line. I remember Ashavin when he came to Arsenal. Excellent player, and then at some point he got so complacent mm -hmm. and you wonder what the hell happened to him. So I've seen this thing happen over and over again. Um, Casemiro, the world beater, suddenly my is not good enough. Varane, the world beater. The thing is, if you come into a mediocre culture, you are going to, Become in mediocre. time, succumb to that. And I think that's what's happening to Lissandro Martinez. And I think that is what is happening in Mayu currently. Mm -hmm. So this coach that they currently have is not the coach that will change the culture. Mm -hmm. So they need that person that changes the culture. I, I will bring up a conversation that I know that is going to interest you, right? Uh, sometime last year, they decided that they were going to, um, they decided that they were going to take, what's it called, um, Ronaldo and terminate his contract. Was it last year or early this year? I think yeah. it was earlier this year. They were going to terminate his contract. The only reason why they terminated Ronaldo's contract because of the interview. Because of his what? The interview. Yeah, Yeah, but Ronaldo... So it's not like they, not like they had decided. He was pushed to do that interview. To it wasn't extent. pushed. He could, have, he could have not done that interview, but he decided to do it. He could have not done that interview, but he decided to do it. Mm. But, what, so for. but what, you know, what he's saying is that the, the, the circumstances... Yeah, because he could, have, he could have still been in the team. He might not be getting his yeah. games, he might not be start, starting games, he will be coming on, but Man United did not want to let go of him. Maybe when his contract finished at the yeah. end of the year, they will probably let him go and not renew. But the idea was not to... I think that what happened, I think that what happened with Ronaldo... And, and that's what you should look at. And let's not just rehearse Ronaldo in. I think that there's a, there, can, there can be an argument that he shouldn't have come out to make the interview. But the thing is, for a person, Ronaldo, Ronaldo is a serial winner. The things that he said, that the things that would drive a person of Ronaldo's caliber now, he's been a consumer professional up until he got back to Manchester United to make that kind of move is desperation. And desperation and the fact that a lot of standards and expectations that he has of the team hasn't been met. Like, it suddenly can become the serial winner's problem that the team is not doing well mm. if his expectations haven't met. And I think in Manchester United, um, my top manager, I forget, came out, not a manager, but like a, a authority in Manchester United came out recently to say the same thing, that he was demanding things that the club and people around him just could not meet. And then you see, that was what happened. At the point, a great player cracks, right? So you can now blame it on the great player now. And then when you start to think back, of people who have said the same similar thing, echoed similar thing, mm. um, Jose Mourinho, you start to much. look at a pattern that means that there's a culture in the club that sucks blood. 
out of people, that sucks greatness out of people, mm -hmm. and that is completely dwelling and so comfortable the, the, in the question, the question is, mm -hmm. was that culture there before 2012? Did it just show up after no, 2012? After so 2012. It has happened after 2012. After 2012. Yes. So, so we're really, not talking about Ferguson era. No, we're talking about post, post Fergie era. Post era. A lot, I would even but you know that, thinking yeah. about post Fergie era, the mm -hmm. only things that have been changed, the only changes that have happened in Man United are the coaching staff. Yeah, but yeah, everything like, else has been the same. Yeah, but, the gym staff, yeah. the medical staff, but it's, it's been the same. It's, it's, yeah, so but, that, that, but that's what happens. Yes. That's what happens when you keep the same. It's the same yeah, ideas, so, and so, then people get people so you, just you get relaxed. You can't really say you can't really say it's this is this that because every coach came in and they tried their own. This Mario came in and tried his own. Moyes came in and tried his own. Uh, Raf Rani came in and tried his own. Lou Vanga came in and tried his own. You, We've had five different or six different coaches in the past ten years. So you can't particularly say no, it's the, the culture in United no, the because reason, now there are several coaches. No, the it's not why, just one coach over that period. The of time. reason why you can say it is that uh, Alex Ferguson was there for how many years? Everybody that existed with Alex Ferguson bought into Alex Ferguson as a character. Alex Ferguson, his philosophy, his very personality, yeah, yeah, everything, yeah, the expectations were Alex Ferguson's expectations. The problem Manchester United has had is that, and this is where Arsenal is getting better, is that Mikel Arteta right now. In the Arsenal, Mikel Arteta is effectively the Tsar, as I is the Caesar, he's mm. the Emperor, right? His philosophy, his ideas, everything that is happening in Arsenal is a reflection of the manager, mm. right? So you can't have patches. Like Mikel Arteta has so much power now in Arsenal that if he wants you gone, you're gone. It's not even a question. If you don't fit into what he's trying to do, what Manchester United needs is a person who will build out a new system post um, um, the. Uh, uh, Alice Ferguson, Manchester United has not found that. Now the problem is, they've become so, uh, so they are becoming so, the expectation is becoming so low mm. that so you don't know when okay, that will okay, happen. Okay, you're saying all of this, but you still don't see what the problem is. You see the players and the coach. You said the problem is the culture. I'm saying the culture. Yeah, the problem so, is the culture. So who, who brings the culture? It's, it's, it's so depends. It's, typically, it, it, like, it could it's be a anyone. manager that brings the culture. But if you make a case that the manager have have been there to. They've been there since. Um, um, I'll give you an example. The guys that were did, that came, Moyes, right? Had to, when you come into a Manchester Maybe United, Moyes, Moyes, you had to earn your respect because the guys that were working were working with Alex Ferguson, and every single person who was working with Alex Ferguson respected Alex Ferguson because it's Alex Ferguson, and this mm -hmm. is what he's done. So there's nothing Alex Ferguson will tell you that you won't go and do. And you understood that. Look, this man would cost me my job, right? If I don't act right. Moise didn't have that kind of respect, and no, no uh, manager till now has had that kind of respect in Manchester United. Ateta has that in Arsenal, though, for the first time in a long time. The manager that comes in, and you know that this guy is truly in charge of the club. Mm. Pep Guardiola is truly so, in charge of uh, Manchester United. Mm. Club is truly in charge of Liverpool. Mm. Manchester United needs that. Eric Ten Hag is. Okay, I, I understand why you say that because mm. it makes sense why you say that because um, twenty the squad that won the trophy in 2013 it was the same score that Moyes inherited yes. in 2014 yeah. mm. and they still finished seventh. And they won and they won it by a good point. Like if you look, I think they won it by a night something point. It was it was a healthy margin. Right. So it wasn't like they and then the won. same team next season. Yeah it was the same team the next season so, and they finished seventh. Okay. okay. Van Persie so. barely had a sniff at goal. Fi finally um last thing I'm going to I'm just gonna ask both of you is what's the What's the next thing for Manchester United? What's the way forward for Manchester United? Now, we are already in this, like, the season has started, right? What do you expect it's, the team to it's do? It's easy. Mm. New ownership. Because if you're working in a company and you, you, you realise that the owners of the company are treating the company so badly, it reflects on everybody else. Mm. Everybody else, it, it, it might just, it might, you might think it's not something that should affect the team, but it does affect the team because every time everyone is speaking about ownership, ownership, change of ownership. Many times now, my United has been on the market. Somebody has probably been, you know, the, the shake. There was a uh, yeah, there was a five uh, billion, uh, four point eight yeah, billion, three know. billion, you know, and then the valuation from the um, Glacier family yeah. is outrageous. I mean, my United it is. Probably worth like three or four billion, and now they are saying they want to, they are not going to sell for nothing less than seven billion, you know, something like that, which is, it's just stupid. You're just making these people bid, bid, and overbid. And within the past ten years, my United has sunk deep into debt yes. 
Yeah, the, 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 the owners money keep taking death, money yeah. out of the out of the club. They, they keep taking money out. They keep taking money out. Taking money out. They're not putting money in. They're not investing. Wow. They just keep taking money out of the club. My United's uh, balance was so great pre uh, uh, pre Ferguson era, post Ferguson era. It's been terrible because Ferguson always went at the owners and said, you know what? If you want me to do my job, you have to do your job as mm. well. Because there's no point in me. I can't motivate uh, motivate these players if at the back of your mind. They are thinking about the stability of the club. Mm. You know, to, are, we, are they going to sell? Are they going to keep us? Are the, the owners are not doing so well. You don't even want to meet the owners because you're like, oh, these people are shit. You're just like having a terrible boss. You're going to do your job regardless, but you're not going to be as effective as you would be when you're happy to do the work for the boss that you know that you like. Yeah. Which is the problem for United. The problem for United is new ownership and then everything else smooth things. Smooth things. Okay. Thank you guys for watching this uh, episode. Well, shitty game. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Fuck that shit. And I'll see you guys on the very next one.